<laughs> this is Allison. And I'm Edward. That's, Hello. That's Edward. And we're back for more words coming out of our mouth. Is that supposed to be our official intro? That's our intro. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Media Jerk Off, the show where media lovers come together to talk about all things media and the ones and the things they recently consumed. And then they come together and they have passionate thoughts about it. I just okay. recently consumed goldfish. I just recently consumed water. Not yeah. apple juice. What are you drinking? I'm drinking some sort of, I think it's a rosé. I don't know wine. The rosé? It's a wine that I drank in the first two episodes. The test episode and the first episode provided by a uh, friend of the show. Friends of the show. Can't just give one credit. Abby and Zoe. Whatever. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for the wine. They gave it to me months ago, and I finally put used to it. I drank that whole bottle by myself. Yeah, during this podcast, right? They did. So thank you for supporting the podcast, y'all. We love you. I'm <laughs> drinking beer. Um, a good Stella, very classic, very just like, um, provided by me. Um, Abby and Zoe, why don't you love me enough to buy me Stella? They treat have, they've done it, never mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. I say, treat the ones you love this Valentine's Day season <laughs> yourself. Why would you ruin it? Why would you ruin it by bringing up Valentine's Day? Why would you ruin this podcast is over. Bye. See you next week. Thank you so week. much for tuning in. Like us on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> subscribe on YouTube. Bye. Don't don't stay. Wow, that was gross. Stay. Allison, how's it going? How's your How was your week? You know, my week was pretty stressful, Edward. Um, I got yelled at at the grocery store. Uh, a man said he wanted to come home with me. That's right, he did. Yeah. He told me about that. That's. Or no, I watched your Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I knew this. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I needed the world to know that a weird man. As I was checking out... And it was like, he helped you, right? Like, he helped, helped you and then told the other cashier... Yeah, he was actually a cashier. He had people in line, in his line. So yeah. he literally left his line to come over to the next... To me, uh, and bag my fruit. I had, like, three fruits. And um, I did not say thank you because that was weird. Yeah, creepy. And he said he was going to go home with me, and I said... Does anybody else not see this? Am I crazy? Nobody acted like it was weird. Not even your own cashier? Not, he just like ignored it. Oh, I was say, was it he or she? It was, was a he. he. He ignored it. He was an old man. Mm. Oh. Uh, so sad. that was weird. Also, today my GPS stopped working on my phone. Oh, I saw that too. But yeah. you made it all the way to Pasadena without and, a GPS. And Van Nuys. And Van Nuys. Van Nuys is hard to mm -hmm. move around. So, maneuver. super so stressful. Like warehouses and. Yeah. But I did it. Industrial buildings. Fuck you, technology. Just like our parents did. R.I.P. R.I.P. Thanks, social media. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Cheers to mm. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said cheers and then didn't even, like, offer her <laughs> cheers. <laughs> How are you? How was your week? Uh, I'm good. I'm pretty good, thanks. It's been uh, pretty chill. I mean, I, I'm uh, in the end of a show that I'm working on. Cool. Um, so it's rap season, so it's been pretty relaxed. Awesome. But yeah, it's pretty good. Played some video games this week. Saw some movies. Video games, you show. say? <gasps> what video games do tell? That was a total cue to move into our first topic. But before we do that, we're going to introduce our pop vinyls of the week. Oh, that was a perfect segue. <laughs> that was a beautiful segue. Uh -huh. You've been watching the Julian and Jenna podcast, and you know your segues. Oh my no, god. No, dude, that a thing? Have you watched their podcast yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> their whole thing is Julian will do segues usually into their sponsors for the episode, and oh. Jenna loses her shit because it's like so smooth the way he'll do it. Oh, bitch, yeah. you gotta start impressing me with those segues. Yeah, we'll see, we'll try. Okay, but before we move on, let's introduce our pop vinyls of the week. Q sound. Do do do. Okay. Do do do. Pop vinyls of the week. Do that again. Do do do. Pop vinyls of the week. <laughs> Ready? Let's harmonize. Do do do. Pop vinyls of the week. Everyone just heard. That sort of works. <laughs> I'm gonna take that bite oh and that'll God, be our please. bit every okay. week. Okay. Yeah. Ever and ever. So, what pop vinyl did you pick? I chose 
Uh, so instead of just doing three, we were like, let's just choose, I said, let's just choose one out of three that we're suddenly going to run out of pop vinyls. Yeah. I don't want people to be like, he said he has a billion. Why are you repeating? I mean, um, he does, but they're just like not all they're here. They're not all here and readily available. Yeah, yeah. I chose this week um, Archie Andrews from Riverdale, as I've discussed, my t- as I'm sitting here in a Riverdale t-shirt, no. drinking out of a Riverdale Disgusting. mug. I didn't even think about that. I, I literally just looked at myself in the camera and I was like, oh. You make me <laughs> sick, sir. I love Riverdale so much, guys. <laughs> my friends, it's like I always tell people when I talk about Riverdale, I'm like, it's so bad, but it's so good. Like, I love it so, so much. Mm-hmm. And then I have other friends that will agree and be like, oh my God, it's such an awful show. And, but like, the way they say it, I'm like, wait, you genuinely think it's awful? Oh, I Whereas see. I'm like, like, yes, it's like, I'm not saying it's your Game of Thrones or something if you're looking for that, like, hot HBO drama, but like, I still love it. Like, I'm invested in these yeah, people. Yeah, okay. All right, anyways. All right. Allison, who did you choose this week as your representative? I choose... Choose... I choose did the Dabagor... I choose to you, Pikachu! <laughs> <laughs> I choose did the, the, the Demogorgon. The Demogorgon. The, the, the Demogorgon. From Stranger Things. Is it in... Uh, I haven't seen season two. It's not in season two, is it? There are demo... Oh, my God, pictures. are there baby Dems? Okay, anyways, at least from season one, from what I know. Anyways, um... The final is from season one. You didn't watch season two? Not yet, because no. of reasons, okay? I'm no, getting to it. I just never, didn't realize that. No. They just announced a whole bunch of new pop finals for season two. Um, today. I took a BuzzFeed quiz, maybe, uh, yeah. which, uh, Stranger Things character from season two I was, and I got Max, and I don't even know who she is. Mm, so. She's good. Yeah. We like Max. I think the audience generally likes Max. Okay. She's a good addition. Uh-huh. Add some female diversity to the main core cast. <laughs> yeah. Outside of just Nancy. Because they killed off Barb. Spoiler. That's topic. Is it? It's been still, for a year. Are we still on it? No, I think it's unfortunately became such, or kind of fortunately, it became such a joke that it kind of died off. Okay. Because the people who genuinely loved Barb... Oh got like grouped with this group of people that were like, oh my god, change your things, like justice for Barb, am I right? And it's like, bitch. That's true, because you dressed up as Barb. Did you even know her name you just- <laughs> before it was a hashtag? You just, you, that was no, your Halloween I costume. I think you effing did. Um, it was, it was my Halloween costume. Would you Barb day. and L or just Barb? No, no, no. I wanted to go as L and then I ended up going as Barb mm. because I was like, no, I'm going to go as someone who I identify with. Because a friend jokingly, I'm mean, probably not jokingly, was like, oh my god, you're such a Barb and I'm a Nancy. And I was like, Yes. So then I was like, I have to go as Barb for Halloween. That's right. And it was a hit. Yeah, you it was were one the, of my favorite Halloween, possibly my favorite Halloween. You were the Barb Halloween. guy. I was Barb guy. Yeah. Um. Also, I'm eating a uh, goldfish. She is. So sorry, but not sorry. Sorry. I was about to sing Demi Lovato. Maybe I'm sorry. But I, I said like, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like not sorry. even the right words. All right, so moving on. Now, <laughs> this is going to be the worst transition because now that we did a segue, it was almost... You know what? You ruined it. This is your own fault. Hi. So uh, my topic this week, my piece of media that I consumed was something I talked about last week. Yeah, we last week. Because, so it's kind of a preview. I gave a preview then. Yeah. Um, because I was in the middle of playing a really cool video game called Until Dawn for the PlayStation 4. Mm. Um, and I finished it this week. And Do tell. It was so good. It was so good, right? Like, I, oh my god, like, I talked about how, so the game itself, to give you a little backstory if you're not familiar with Until Dawn, it's a game that came out in 2015 for the PS4. You I are somehow behind, missed bitch. it. I don't know oh. how I totally missed this well, game. Well, here's the thing is, like, a lot of people have because it's just, re- like, re- resurging. I was saying, and that's how I found out about it. Like, yeah. all these YouTubers and stuff are posting about, like, oh, like, we're playing Until Dawn right now, and I'm like, is this? Vastus does. So the game, it's a horror genre game uh, where a group of teenagers, um, after a traumatic event that occurred a year prior, um, they go to reunite at the site that the tragedy happened to kind of like pay justice and kind of be like, this is what our awful tragic friends would have wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like shit hits the fan and, like, what you think is going one way, it blows up even more, and all this craziness ensues, and it's just... It's truly horror, though. Like, it is crazy. It's um, so scary. I wanted to die. But it's not even just, like, a regular video game. It's one of those games where it's a, like, role-playing, um, choose-your-own-adventure type, but in a way where it's, like... It's as if you're watching a movie. It's very cinematic, where it is basically... The only controls are you're moving your character 
and choosing decisions. And the fact that um, most of the characters are like, you, and you they're, recognize them. They're recognizable actors who, it's not even just like their voices are being used, but mm-hmm. their likeliness is too. Like they literally generated them into video game characters that, it, like Hayden Panettiere looks like Hayden Panettiere and um, is her voice. The guy from Mr. Robot. Uh, Rami. Uh, Malik? Malik? I don't know how to say oh, name. Abby's gonna hate that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I have, like I know him as the guy from Night at the Museum. Oh, uh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, yeah. And so it has a really good cast. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason I wanted to talk about it was because not only so I have a I have a history of loving games where it is like the choose your own adventure, which I've talked about. Those so, are like, like the best ones, honestly. They're so good because as I described uh, when I was talking about how I was playing it last week, I find it that it is always very interesting to me that. Not only is it is so cool that, like, based on the decisions I will make throughout the video game, um, by the end of it, like, my ending is different than your ending, mm-hmm. saying you played differently. Yep. But because of that, and because it is so cinematic and very much just like watching a movie, people who aren't necessarily usually drawn in or excited to play video games are usually attracted to it and end up having a good time with it. Um, yep. Like, you had described in your own experience that you really liked it. I loved it. It's so good. And I didn't even, like, I mean, there were some times where I played it mm-hmm. and some times where I just watched. And both times, like, yeah, I didn't care. Like, it was great. Yeah. And um, the people who I played with have played it before. Yeah. And they didn't mind watching it again, seeing which things I chose. Which I think what stands out to me, making this possibly one of my favorite, of the genre, like, I've played a lot. Like, I've talked about Beyond Two Souls, Heavy Rain, the Telltale games are all very much, like, choose your own adventure, decisions, whatever. But usually when I reach the end, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, I got out of what I wanted to get out of it. Whereas this game, like, one of my other roommates who wasn't there when me and my other one were playing it, uh, she was like, I really want to play through it. Like, I really want to try it. And, like, I'm excited for her to play it because I really want to watch and see not only what choices she makes compared to what I made, but, like, I'm curious what the outcomes are. Because... So basically the game, like I said, it is a horror genre. Stuff is happening. There's like eight main characters. And based on the decisions you make, all those eight, it, like the decisions you choose and select will affect which of the eight main characters at the beginning are living oh, yeah. at the end. Like it's a horror game. That's, where it's like, yeah, that's like the whole point is like, can you get all eight? Is it eight? It's all, I think all, it's eight. I believe it's eight. All eight people to, yeah. uh, to make it out, to make to it. escape. Until dawn. Until dawn. Can they make it till until dawn? Oh, oh. Yes. And it's so it's just I, on my first try, and I going in blind. Like, usually with these, I was telling you um, when I was talking about you, me playing it, um, I usually will at least have known, like, oh, I know the first, the beginning. Or, like, right. me being like, I'm like, oh, I want the greatest outcome. I will usually, like, look at stuff and be like, oh, or not, like, cheat completely where it's like, this is what exactly what you need to do. But I'll be like, here are some hints of, like, if you want to keep this character alive... Don't do this. Right. Or, like, know that, like, she doesn't like doing this. Or, like, that sort of thing. I went in blind to this. And because of that, I think it totally added to, added to the experience. Like, I lost one of the characters, I want to say, around, like, the two-hour mark. And the game itself is, like, ten hours long. Mm-hmm. Um, and losing her so early on stressed me out. Because then from that point on, I was, like, any of these people can be lost causes. Their lives, their fragile lives are just held in the balance. Like, literally, you don't know, you every don't, little thing I do, and it's... It's not predictable, right? It's not. No. And that was the thing, too. Usually with other games, it's... Which I find with decision-making games, there's always, like, the... It feels like the two decisions when you come to, like, a fork in the road, it's very much like, okay, this is the smart decision, this is the dumb decision. Mm-hmm. And to the game developers are kind of like, all right, like, do you want to play this game? Like, do you want your characters to look like idiots, or do you want them to be smart? Whereas this was very much like... This fucks with you. No. Like, so, like, there's one sequence early on, the mm-hmm. character I ended up losing, uh, the first one, uh, where you're, uh, she gets kidnapped by a mistress entity, and she's dragged through the woods, and you, as the male love interest, are like, I'm going to chase her down, and i got to find her. I remember, yep. You're running through the woods, and... Um, all the decisions, like, you keep reaching, like, oh, like, you'll reach, like, a cliff. And it's, like, do you want to just jump down the cliff or do you want to take a safe route around the cliff? Oh, is that the one where you have to make, like, snap decisions? Like, really quick. Yeah. And so then I kept choosing, like, and then, like, you do that and you go to the next one. It's, like, oh, there's a river. Do you want to jump over the river or do you want to, like, run down really quick to cross the bridge across the river? And I was, like, I don't want him to die, too. Like, I was, like, she's already taken. She's probably going to die. Yeah. I was, like, I don't want him to die, too, trying to save her. I'm just going to keep doing all of the slow, like... 
The no! Oh, later to find no. out. I, I mean, okay, so there may be spoilers in this, I'm going to say now, um, because the game has been out for two, almost three years. Okay, don't act like two. don't act like they're stupid for not knowing. You just found out. Oh, no, out but I'm it. just saying, like, I know, yeah, but I'm going to try to avoid spoilers. Yeah. But basically... Because, but I already did it, because, right. no, you're supposed to pick the fast route. But The yes. faster you go, the sooner you can save So her. I found out afterwards, because I was really bothered, and I was like, I don't know how she... The girl ended up dying. By the time I got to her, yeah. she was dead. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I did wrong. Like, I oh. don't. Because to me, I was like, oh, it was something that happened previously. Like, and all the decisions between this guy and this girl that I made affecting the relationship uh-huh. is what affected her dying or living. Mm-hmm. And so because she died, I was like, oh, it's something I had him say to her. It's something that he didn't cater to her. No. Uh, I was supposed to be heroic. Maybe she really wanted a douchebag boyfriend. And so I was like, that's why she no. died. Um, yeah, but no, it always, turns out. You always try to play, like, the nice guy. You always play to, try to play it safe. But, like, listen, you got to play it fast and loose. And it turns out because I took all the safe routes trying to keep him safe, it slowed him down in the process of reaching her in yeah. time. I think with that one, it's like, even if you take the fast routes, and if you, like, mess up, you can only mess up, like, twice or else you'll That's die. what I, I did read online because I was very curious about that one. My roommate was like, she's like, don't you dare look up how, ever, how to save everyone because, like, I don't want to know. And I was like, no, 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 no. But I was like, I really want to know that one. Yeah. Because a lot of the other ones I could understand. Like, based on this, like, knowing what the other decision was and knowing that I kept them safe, I'm like, okay, I could see if I chose the other one, clearly something bad would happen. But yeah. with this, I was like... I don't know what I did. Like, I don't understand. But now I get it literally was just, yeah, you have to always choose the quick option. And you have to get it right. And then there's, like, the quick uh, play events where it's, like, you got to quickly hit buttons while he's doing stuff. And if you mess up on any of them, then she's, it slows you down and she still dies. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, R.I.P. It was the girl from Camp Rock. I totally don't know what the actress's name was. I don't was, know their names. She's the blonde girl, the mean one from Camp Rock. Um, the mean one. <laughs> the mean one. Good one. Um, but no, it's so good. Um, the fact, like, we, I played a lot on the first day. I started last Sunday. I bought the game and then played it. Um, and then we broke it up. Like, we had, like, two chapters left during the week. And so we played one more chapter. Each chapter took about an hour. There's ten chapters. Um, and every time we turn the game back on and just holding the controller, just, like, the aesthetic, the sounds... Um, Makes your hand sweaty, huh? literally, like, I would be, like, not, I don't want to be, like, shaking, but I was, like, I literally would turn to my room and be, like, I'm so nervous right now. Like, I'm about to walk through a door, and, like, anything could pop out at me. It's just, like, it took all of the essence of what made good horror Mm -hmm. and, like, gave it. Like, there's, uh, there's Supernatural, there's just, like, really, there's, like, Saw, there's so many, like, Saw-inspired influence things. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Totally very, like, Cabin in the Woods. Yes. Um, it's the whole genre of, like, a whole bunch of teenagers who are just, like, going to hang out. The best kind. There's every archetype, but even then, like, the archetypes themselves are kind of, like, bent because it's, like, their personalities are affected by, like, how you, the decisions you choose for them. Right. And it's, ah, oh, it's so good. Out of five so stars, good. out of five stars, what would you give it? Honestly, a five. Wow. Like, I, it has been a lot, like, I, a regular player of video games, love video games so much, play them all the time. Yeah. But, like, it has been a long time since, and I don't know if it's because I was so blind, going in blind to this game, but just, like, coming out of it, I was like, that was an experience mm-hmm. that I wasn't ready for, but, like, I'm so excited to play it again. At some point. So you played Friday the 13th, right? I have, yes. How does this compare to, like, legit uh, uh, a video game based off of a real horror movie? Like, um, was it, was it... So, okay, because, so Friday the 13th definitely was spooky at the start when it first came out. Because the whole idea, the whole theme behind Friday the 13th is it's multiplayer, so it's all online. You're either Jason or you're a counselor. And that whole thing is where it's like, if you're a counselor, your goal is to survive the night or kill Jason um, or escape from Camp Crystal Lake. Or if you're Jason, it's to kill everyone before Mm -hmm. they escape. Um, And it's definitely creepy because there is the themes of like, like Friday the 13th, like based on a movie, it is like the music's there. Jason is there as a likeliness. Um, Other characters appear, um, like Tommy Jarvis is there, who I guess is someone in the main movies. I've only seen the first one. Tommy Jarvis is not in that one. Um, but 
it's one of those things where like you're hiding and then like the Jason music will start playing and like then he'll suddenly be busting in your door, kicking it in, trying to I kill hate- you. No, nope, done. And so that's very creepy at first. It definitely was scary. Uh, but I mean, as you keep playing it, you start learning the tricks of like, oh, I did know you not I die? He busts in your door and you didn't die. Oh, a lot of times he picks me up and throws me through a window, chokes me, chops my head off, uh, or I'm able to escape. But like that reminds me of like the Slender Man one. Yeah, it's very oh. similar to that, except as if someone was controlling the Slender Man. No, um, no. So that's why it is always creepier knowing there oh. is a living person controlling the Jason that's trying to hunt you down. Um, but I, I think because that. of the uh, game mechanics of like it is so repetitive, you start to kind of like tone it down. Like, all right, Jason's about to bust the door in. Oh. I'm gonna escape out this window. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Play like I plan on playing until dawn again. Especially like I want to go in now and try to save the two individuals who I couldn't save before. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I don't know. I part of me still feels like I'd be extremely creeped out. Because there is a lot of, like, oh, I didn't do that. Like, although there are decisions of just, like, what are you going to make the characters say? There are also decisions of, like, there's something chasing you, which is terrifying. Do you hide or do you keep running? And, like, so I'm curious. Apparently, I found out looking at reading into some stuff and reactions online after I finished it. Like, I found out because I chose to keep running in one scene instead of hiding. I found out that, like, had I hid... It would have opened a whole other scene that I did not experience in my game oh. because I chose to keep running and she got caught. I like I didn't know that if I hid, there was a chance that, like the character I was controlling actually would have made it and not been caught. Interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. I feel like right now there's still a freshness to it. If I turn it back on, that until dawn will keep providing me with that uneasiness in the horror. I mean, I still was freaking out. Ooh, like, I, like the thought of it right now is so spooky. It's yeah. oh god, one of the things I don't know if I want to say it, like what the whole supernatural effect is. But here's okay, so the supernatural effect of the game that ends up coming into the theme a little bit later on in the game. Um, it's one of those things that's like is a real wolves? myth. No. Oh. It's the it's uh, the wedding go wedding go wedding go wedding go no I don't know if that's how it's going I don't know Hang on, I gotta look it up because I don't want to like, that's fucking right like I won't say how they're involved or what the entire process Wendigo. is but like I think it's wedding go yeah the wedding go yeah. Northwoods yeah the wedding go is like a myth and like it was one of the, it's. I'm really weirded out by, like, real myths and legends. Like, just the fact that, like, the people are like, Bigfoot is real. And I'm like, he is. He's out there. The Loch Ness Monster. Definitely. No, conspiracy theories, 100% real. No, Every single one theory. of... <laughs> <laughs> Remember? I was just about to make a joke about the Loch Ness Monster. Being... No! Yes, really you're bad. right. Oh my <laughs> god, I do this every time. She once told a professor that, she's like, oh my god, conspiracy theories, but, like, the Loch Ness Monster. And our professor was like... She did not. She did not. That's just what I thought and you're she You're retelling. Said. I was not there, but you're No, I just sent it in an email, and I'm like, I feel like such a dumbass because the Loch Ness Monster is not a conspiracy theory. And I think she knew that, but, you know, she yeah. wanted to... Conspiracy theories, I believe a majority of them I are real. Believe, the government is out to kill us all. I believe in all um, of them. But, no, but the myths and the legends. Yeah. Like when you tell me that there's a supernatural being yeah. that exists, I'm like, it's real. It's totally true. Right. So I play this game. The supernatural effect that comes in, horrifying. I hated it. So scary. It was scary. Over it. Not a fan at all. Right. And so then, for me, so then they have, like, as you're playing the game, you unlock, like, special bonus things where it's, like, from the creators, like, giving you, like... Like, oh, this was our inspiration for this. So then there was the one that was, like, the backstory of the wedding go. And so you're, like, I'm listening to it. And they're, like, oh, yeah, the um, the mystery of the wedding go spans from, like, the Native American myths of, yep. like, this being, this monster that once existed and would torment um, the individuals of certain tribes and blah, blah, blah. And so and they're, like, it is still believed, you know, there's this northern tundra of Michigan um, that's, like, unexplorable by man. Like, ma- much of it, just, like, people go in there and they don't come out. And it's just, like, one of those things, like, there's definitely, like, untouched land mm-hmm. from man. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's believed that that's where many of the Wendigo exists to this day. And I'm, like, they're in my nation? They're here? Yeah, America's These things are here? <laughs> no. They're, ri- they're, oh, that's terrifying. Like, I didn't know that it was here. so scary. Wow, I hate it. So scary. Um... I highly recommend it until dawn. If you can play it, if you somehow have a, con- have a connection to a PS4, 
totally better off as like a first-hand experience because you are the one making the decisions. Torrenting. Making the decisions makes it that much scarier because you're like, I don't want this person to die. Um, But at the same time, even if you could just watch a YouTube video of someone playing it, it still will have the same effect, I think, of watching. I Now they have like the Fine Brothers, who I'm a fan of, they have on their channel, which is one of the reasons I was inspired to play it. And I was like, what is this game? They have like their usual reactors playing through the game right now. Right. And so, like, even I turned that on um, to listen to while I was doing some work, and it was like I had to turn it off. Because even though I wasn't really fully paying attention, just listening to it was giving me anxiety again that I was like, I can't. I couldn't. I can't handle it right no. now. Exactly. It's a lot. Um, but so good. So good. So, so, so Like, good. the story is strong. The action <sighs> is strong. The mystery is strong, just strong. I, yeah, they, it could, if just, it was a person, it could lift like five thousand pounds. So good. very strong. So 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 good. It's was I have like I only have one tattoo. I have the Game of Thrones tattoo on my arm, um, as mentioned in previous. Oh, episodes. this this would get a the, tattoo. Like, I have the like TV show arm is the, my goal to get like icons from TV shows, oh. and then this arm is hopefully one day going to be like video game icons. Interesting. I was like, I'm gonna get the butterfly from uh, that's on um, Hannah's arm. Um, and because it becomes a big thing. And just the butterfly effect and yep. how everything affects everything. Yep. And, like, literally, like, it's not often, like, I have my ideas for, like, I'm like, oh, I want, like, a Zelda tattoo. I want, like, this tattoo. I want mm-hmm. a Kingdom Hearts tattoo, whatever. But, like, it's not often, like, when I finish a game and I'm like... That's I'm, it? Like, I live the game and I'm like, I'm getting that tattoo someday. Aww. Like, that is... That's so sweet. Because to me, it's like, it's not even just like, oh, I loved it, but it's like, it made an impression on me and it showed me something. And this game, showing just, like... Like a film, just like it created such a strong universe, strong characters. It had a lot of like the horror tropes that made it horror, but like it still felt fresh and new. And I don't know if that's because I was the one controlling what happened to these people and I was literally living inside of it, but like. That'll do it. It was so good. You're gonna make me tear up, man. It's so that's my goal for your episode. Your passion <laughs> is just it's moving through me. Oh, it that's was so, so cute. That's good. It was one of those where it was like I finished the game and I was like, I wanna write a horror script. Like I was <gasps> like, I need to write something horror related because I feel inspired. Yes! I I haven't yet. I haven't done anything. It's so exciting. We'll see. I'm gonna read it. You're gonna make it. Like now talking about it, I'm like, I'm gonna play it until dawn tonight. I don't want to, I shouldn't, but it's such a good game. I could sit here and talk about it for hours. I'm just, I'm so glad you Let me enjoyed check my, it. I feel like there was more. I was like, I have to talk about this. Hayden Penetier, you're so great. His notes literally say, came out in 2005. PS4. PS4. <laughs> Love it. All caps. All caps. It's so good. Mike. Wait, did it really come out in 2005? Uh, uh, I think no. you said I, 2015. I was gonna say I thought you said yeah, 2015. That's, 2015. I was gonna say also Two great graphics. Ago, August of 20, the graphics, which that's the thing too. I was like, oh. scraping 2015, like not saying like, I mean, the graphics it was the new, not good. It was in the 20? new generation of gaming. It was PS4. But even then, I'm like, there's been games that have come out now where I'm just like, wow, for a game that came out two years ago, like they were still figuring out the limits of like what we can do graphically with a lot of like this generation. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, like it's really good like you can tell that's Rami you can tell that's Hayden like you can tell that it's all of them it's so good it's so good it's so good it's so good play until dawn please play until dawn even if you're not a horror fan like I don't play horror video games but just like no because even if you're not a fan of horror it still has again the plot's good the story's good Character development is good. Mystery, supernatural. Yes, it's spooky, but like plot twists, like it's not predictable. Like, oh my do it. God. If you think you can predict this game, go fuck yourself. Please Although, try, there, try me. There was yeah. this one time. There was some stuff I guessed, but like I yeah. mean, or I felt it. Yeah. But um, no, definitely worth checking out. And Edward has good taste in video games, so thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. So you should check it out. Well, that's good. Until Dawn, check it out on PS4. It was on sale, so that's why I got it. Ah. This is not sponsored by Until Dawn. Until Dawn is phenomenal. I don't know the company behind it, but guys, I want more games. Clearly, there's spinoffs, but like, no, I want a full fledged, not even a sequel. I'm not saying like I want an Until Dawn sequel. No. Unless you keep it called Until Dawn, it's like a whole new situation. You gotta keep everyone alive until dawn. Right. But. Oh, it's so good. So good. Because I don't think you could do a sequel depending on, like, if everyone died or whatever. Mm-hmm. But please do it. It was so good. So, so, so I good. I play it. I haven't felt it. that great. I haven't felt this great about a video game in a long time. 
and I really, 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 really liked this one. Oh my gosh, look, he's in love! I'm he's blushing! In love. I'm blushing <laughs> until dawn. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break, um, and then we'll be right back with Allison's topic. I'm going to talk about something a little depressing. Wink, wink. Stay tuned. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Put on your little headphones. It's my turn to talk. It is my turn for topic time. Topic time, Allison, topic time. Hi, Allison. Hey. What media did you consume this week? Ooh, I got something for you. Please give. <laughs> I will. So, um, like I said before commercial break, it's going to be a little depressing. But we'll see. I don't think it's going to be like, ugh, I'm so sad. I'm going to go cry after I listen to this podcast. But maybe you will. <laughs> maybe you're an empath. Maybe you're into that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, little backstory. I suffer... From clinical depression. Is that a thing? Can you say clinical depression? I feel I like... Clinical is usually like someone's prescribed or been like... Like I've been diagnosed. Right. Like there's people who are like, oh, I have depression. And yeah. Like, oh, you're really sad. Like, oh, like, who do you see? Like, did your doctor tell you that? Like, are you on meds? I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I just know I'm depressed. Like, yeah. I'm really extra sad. Yeah. Which they very well could be, but it's not like diagnosed by a professional. Yeah. Like I went to a doctor. You're clinically depressed. I went yeah. to a doctor and I was like... Because I also I um have uh, some anxiety disorders. Which I didn't know. Yeah, it relates to the observation and treatment of actual patients rather than theoretical or laboratory stuff. Okay, yeah. okay. So, yes. Right, right. I just feel like uh, I sound like an asshole when I'm like, I'm <laughs> clinically depressed. Yeah. Um, no. But anyways, yeah. So, basically what I'm saying is I was diagnosed with depression when I was 17, 16, 17, 18? Mm-hmm. Don't really remember. I should mm-hmm. remember. People, like, remember these things, right? You were a teen. Yeah, I was a, I was a teen. And um, also... Uh, Anxiety disorders. Again, I didn't know there were multiple, but there are. Um, But usually that morphs. I feel like um, when you're depressed, um, it morphs into your humor. Do you feel that? And especially with today, um, I have some statistics. Um, Anxiety... Disorders. Before I actually tell you what we're talking about, let me tell you some I statistics. Even, I was like, they don't even know what <laughs> media you consider. You're just like, I'm depressed. Here's <laughs> depression statistics. I'm depressed. All of You're you like, should oh, listen. Did you think she was kidding about feeling sad? <laughs> <laughs> Take a load of this. <laughs> no. So, but um, I wanted to do this because it's relatable. Like, yeah, people, no. Oh no, absolutely. In, up, yeah. in today's in today's society, I feel like. I mean, I went to art school. I feel like you go around art school, you're like, oh hey, I have depression, and everyone's like, join the fucking club, they're bitch. Like, Welcome. You thought you were and like, special. And they all look like, yes, and? <laughs> you're like, shut up, improv group. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, um, but this what website, this is the Anxiety and Depression Association of America website. Um, I just Googled it. It says facts and statistics. So anxiety disorders... Um, Affect 40 million adults in the United States, age 18 and older, mm-hmm. or 18.1 percent of the population every year. What about depression? Because that's like what I was talking about. Um, there's a lot. Major depressive disorder, um, depressive, persistent depressive disorder. Okay, well, like it affects a lot. Like 10 percent of the population, I would say, and that's like a lot. And I feel like um, a lot of those are millennials. Hey, what's up? It's your boy. Uh, what was I doing? The frog comes in. I'll do an edit of him on the unicycle. Yeah, boy. Will you? No. <laughs> Here come that boy. Oh, shit, what up? Oh, shit, what up? That wow. would be a cool gif. That would be. So, okay. To what I want to share is this... Uh, oh, no, no, no. So, what I... I st- it, it, I talk about how depressed I am sometimes because honestly, mm-hmm. honestly, it makes me feel better. Mm-hmm. Just like saying it and not having it be so serious because depression is a serious thing. Um, but just like saying it makes me feel more normal, yeah. I guess. Right. Just like erasing the stigma it's, behind it. To me, I think it's you, right. It's you, Adding instead humor. of like a control you, it's you making light of it and being able to kind of be like laughing in its like, face. Listen, depression. I'm going to like, I'm the one making something of you. You're not making something of me. Exactly. Yeah. So I was 
was being depressed as shit, uh, but like funny, to, I don't know. It's not really funny. It's one of those things where you're like, ooh, please stop joking about it. But also, I relate. Um, and my friend told me, I don't go on Reddit, but he, he goes on Reddit. He told me about this, is it subreddit? subreddit. A subreddit called Two me IRL, go back to it. I don't remember what it's called. To me IRL, for me IRL. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think you'd really enjoy it. And I'm like, oh boy, depression memes, which is basically what it is. It's a thread Mm -hmm. of depression memes that you click on and you're like, oh. I'm looking at it right now. Like I did not hear about this until she literally just came in and was like, I want to talk about this is my topic this week. So this is all brand new to me. Like I did not hear of this subreddit. I did not know of this meme, but that's what I'm looking at right now. If YouTuber watchers, if you're watching this, where you're like, what the hell is he doing as a laptop? Not listening to her talk about depression. <laughs> I am Same. observing while listening. Um, yeah, there are a bunch of memes that. I'm trying to find. I'm like, guessing depressed people have made. Like this one I just opened at the top of the subreddit is the caption is when you see an opportunity to leave a social interaction and the picture is it looks like a dog like breaking through a hole in a piece of drywall. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the same. Yeah. If you experience if you suffer with depression, if you suffer with anxiety, you're just like you go through these and you're like me. That's so awful, but like that's <laughs> me. Yeah. Um, I have gone on Tumblr because I'm a Tumblr person. I still like don't Same. know the whole thing about Reddit or whatever. Oh, if you're gonna say Tumblr, I was like, I don't think anyone. Oh yeah, also Tumblr. Tumblr. But I have gone through blogs where they just repost memes, sort of like to me IRL for me yeah. IRL. That's a mouthful. It is. Weird. Um, it's. I still don't completely even reading the description. I don't completely understand why it's to me IRL for me IRL. It's just too it's relatable, I guess. Like, well, this identify. is a click hole um, article. Heartbreaking. This guy is beating himself up oh, for making a no. dumb comment in a meeting, even though his coworkers ignore him whenever he talks. Same. Me. 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 Same. Cheers. Oh. Cheers to me and you and me. Me, me IRL. Me, for me, IRL. Yes. It's to me, for me. Wow. Yeah. Because no one else is there but you. Um. Whoa. So, yeah, I have gone on Tumblr and, like, looked at blogs that have similar things, and I'm just like, LOL, same. And I have shown my roommate these memes, who, um, to my knowledge, does not uh, suffer from depression. And she, I show her, I think they're so funny. She looks at me, and she goes, do you feel this way? Oh. And I'm like, "Uh, yeah. And she's like, oh, my God. I'm like, it was just like. Kind of eye-opening. Wow. Yeah. It was, like, eye-opening because she was kind of concerned about the jokes that uh, were on the memes. And I was, like, I've never experienced someone not relating to this. I I don't realize that people don't, like, it was really that intense, right? Because right now, as a new individual exposed to this meme, Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here, like, Relatable, me, mm-hmm. same, I get it. Like this one I just opened is a picture of a cat who looks just like he's just staring off his little like cupcake with a candle out on fire. The caption is when once again it is your birthday and you are left to reflect on your empty existence full of endless failure and bad decisions. And I'm like, yep, me every year. I'm me, birthday. right? But if you take a second and just like read that. Yeah. That's super dramatic and super intense. As a person who does not experience these emotions, Mm -hmm. that's, like, kind of fucked up. You're kind of like, if someone made that, you're like, I made this, and you show someone who doesn't, like, feel that way, they're probably like, oh, my God, see a doctor. Please don't hurt yourself. Which, pardon me now, because I... Initial reaction, I don't know how to react to this. Like, right. I don't know, like, is this cool? Like, is it fine? Is it triggering? Is it just kind of, like, adding to, like, LOL, depression's funny? Yeah. But, like, that, I'm like, that's kind of cool. And that, like, a person who, like, doesn't get it, or they're like, oh, my God, stop being so depressed, or, like, whatever, like, because they don't have a grasp on what exactly an individual suffering from depression is feeling. I'm like, that's interesting for you to say, like, your roommate was, like what like is this an actual thought that you have like right that's interesting i feel like that could open new doors of like understanding yeah affected yeah it kind of just like shows people like this is 
these are thoughts like even even though they're funny and they're done in like creative ways these are thoughts that people have yeah so um what was i gonna say i don't know i don't know oh so my question to you, Edward. Yes. And to the audience, I guess. The, the Let us know in the comment section below or tweet at us at Media Jerkoff. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> the three people that listen to us. Hi, Mom. <laughs> do, do things... I don't know how to word it because for me, reading these, mm-hmm. even on a depressed day where I'm yeah. just like, I have nothing to live for, just like reading these makes me feel better because yeah. I feel like... I'm not alone. There are other people that are like, oh, life is shit. We know. Mm-hmm. Here um, are all these memes of, what is this? Benadryl? What the fuck was oh, that? Oh, sorry. It's a Bener- Benadryl allergy. It looks like an ad. Like There's a man laying in a field of flowers. It's a Benadryl allergy ad, and it says, you can't sneeze if you're unconscious. And he's just laying there. What a freaking... That's like a mood. 2018. Like, same. Um... But for, for for me, it makes me feel better. However, there is some controversy of... What is this? This is The Incredibles, uh, Flash, and he Dash. says... Dash. Wow. And he says, why do you only make jokes about being depressed? And Dash is saying, it defines who I am. And he's, like, slamming his fist on the table, like the like dinner table, like he's making a point. But um, some wow. people think that... Uh, think that these are bad that these are um only fueling to depressed stereotypes Mm -hmm. um making people feel bad about life in general yeah which honestly if you're reading these you don't feel good about life like i don't they're not gonna make you not feel good about life right as as uh exhibit a my roommate she doesn't think they're funny she doesn't want to Whereas I'm like, ha same. Or like, that's so me. Like, that's what I'm thinking. But yeah, isn't that strange? It's interesting to me because I'm very torn right now. Because part of me is like, a lot of these are very, I don't want to be like, they're innocent about like being sad and hating yourself. But like, some of them are just like, like the one we talked about, the dog wanting to escape mm-hmm. when you see an opportunity to leave. Like, I'm like, this is fun. And like you said, I think it is a good way for people to like, not feel so alone and being like like it's sad to be like bond over your depression Mm -hmm. like it is like you're not feeling alone like that like i feel like one of the biggest symptoms of depression Mm -hmm. is people are really feeling like secluded alone separated just like i know when i have a session or something where i'm just i'm like everyone in the world hates me and can't stand me right now Mm -hmm. and it's like this type of thing is like no like what you or myself is feeling, it's like there's someone else right now feeling the same way. That like you're not really alone, even though that's how you're feeling internally. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I don't know why. Like then I read this one, which is like me trying to find a suicide method that is both painless and effective, and it's the thinking lady meme. Yeah, with um, all the with all the scientific the and uh, uh, what's it called? All the, I don't know, the theories the and the, theory, the, 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 uh, the equations. 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 Yes, thank you. All the scientific equations um, around her head, and she's like thinking, she's like, hmm. hmm. And like, I don't know why, like, that feels weird to me. Like, that doesn't sit well with me because I don't know if it's just because it's mentioning suicide or it's like. That one's very direct. That one's like, about very, killing yourself. And that's when I'm like, ooh, like, I don't like that. Like, that okay. feels weird to me. But then, even though, like, these could be memes that you can find anywhere on the internet, while you were talking, I was reading, like, the actual description of, like, this specific subreddit. Right. And it talks about somewhere in here, um, because it begins with, this is a subreddit for memes that hit too close to home or too real for subs, Mm -hmm. like uh, subreddit me IRL, which I don't know what that is. But then they go, we are not subreddit depression, however. The sticky is a good resource for if you need real help. If you have depression, talk to a therapist. It really does help. You are not alone, and recovery is possible and worth it. And then it goes on to more. Oh, um, I like and that. And part of me, I'm like, I really like that caption because that is very much like, yes, we're here and we're laughing like, about, joke about jokes it all we're you making. Want, yes. But like at the end of the day, like, like it is, it is providing need- a resource. Like if you need real help, it's not just saying like, lol, you're depressed. Here, have some fun with it. It's like, no, if you are feeling in a very d- like hazardous situation where you are very uncomfortable and you're having certain thoughts. Mm-hmm. Here's your ways to reach out and change that. And, like, and the the very first the very first post is 
Um, oh, wow. The new thread, it says, don't kill yourself, help inside. And, and I, that's the pinned thread. So that means no matter what, that will be the first thing that's always there. Yeah, so that, that has a, um, a bunch of resources to... Um, so, Let me see what's inside. Yeah, but I assume we'll that's what it, what it is. Well, yeah. Like, yeah. Like first has, thing, United States National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Oh, it has oh, United wow. States, Australia, Austria. It has different countries. And it is everyone's like suicide. This is great. What? Wow. Literally, I, wow. It like goes. Like every country. We have Norway, suicide Austria, Portugal, Romania, Serbia. So, I don't even know what that is. S- I know Finland. Finland. Um, wow. Like, to me, then, that's really cool, because, yes, it is, like, it draws people in with the humor, but it is at the end of the day, like, but look, like, if you are, if you really need help, like, that's what this is for, and, like, there is, Mm -hmm. it is still, and that's the first thing, it's that kind of, like, they're putting the humor up front, and then they're like, oh, wait, that person needs help, here, blah, 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 like, the first thing, like, it's hard to miss, like, if you're reading the description, oh, I just X away from it, but, (laughs) that's all right, um, but it's very present, like, it is, that's, what the separated is, mm-hmm. which is really cool. So on that hand, I'm like, okay, like I do like it, as in like it is very much a support system as well as it's a support system in through humor they're providing support, but it's not just like lol, just have a joke and hope to feel and hope you feel better. Right. It's like there's more to it. Like we are here. And in real life, I do feel kind of uh, when I do joke about depression or. Or, or suicide or something like that. I do, in the back of my mind, say you need to stop doing that because it's not funny. Mm-hmm. And I have known people who have resorted to that. And it's just not funny. It's like people mm-hmm. feel this way. But, like, this, I don't know. This it's it, very But weird. it is, like, what you said. It, like, like there's people a weird, like, line of, yeah. like, yeah, like, what is okay and what is not okay. Um yeah, I don't know. Yeah, people bond over it because it's like, again, it's like, make you feel less alone. Because that's part of yeah. it is how isolating mm-hmm. the disease is. Because yeah. it makes you think only of your how you're feeling, um, how you are. And you don't think like, oh, these people do love me. I do have friends. You don't you don't think that. And even if you like do think that, it doesn't matter. So just like seeing other people... Feeling this way. I think if I had to choose, if I couldn't stand in the middle ground and be like, I'm not really sure. There's pros and cons on both sides. I think I would. I see more positive in it, mm-hmm. at least in the community of like, I do like the sense of community and support system and the very clear like, if you need help, do this. Um, I can understand where people could be offended. I'm not justifying like the, the one I read that was very specifically seemed to be, like you said, very like, it's about suicide. Yeah. I'm like, Ooh, I don't know. That seems a little weird to me. Mm-hmm. But, like, the ones that are very much just, like, when you're chilling on a cold Thursday evening and you sit there like, damn, she really doesn't like me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a man. Or a, it's the a, guy. A, that's a character, I think, from... Uh, Adventure Time? Adventure Time. The lemon guy the just lemon staring guy. out into space. He's just, He's like... He's just staring straight ahead. And that's why I'm, like... Like, that's funny because it's not... I mean, I'm not saying like, oh, well, it's funny. Depression is funny. But like, I can see the relatable. It's, not... it's the relatable level of it that's like, haha, I agree. Mm-hmm. But like, it's not like I'm not the one that made this post. Someone else made this, and me agreeing with them mm-hmm. is like, we're having the same thoughts that it's nice to know there is yeah. one out there. And then there's all of this. Oh my God. Wow. And then the comments, like, I was like, and then I want to look at the comments. And look at this. Someone's like, yep, Crush calls me beautiful. Say it back to her. Seems to be going good. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But he seems to break it down. Like, this is where it's at. And look at people are commenting. Like, shoot. Yeah. People. People. Wow. Because we all, we are humans. And we think the same thoughts. I feel you. I felt myself. And we feel the same things. Even though it doesn't feel wow. like it. And this is a forum to where people can get that out and everyone's like fucking same and you're like what the yes. fuck and it's like the thought to me right now is it's this is much more of because to me I again I'm not clinically diagnosed or anything but and I've never had a therapist I've never been in any sort of sessions but I can get where it's like or when you're talking to a friend not even just a therapist but just a friend and they're like I get how you feel mm-hmm. and you're like you're just saying that you, like, you don't, don't know. know and to this this is like they know like one it's like they're commenting but two, it's not even that it's like two it's like 
they came to the subreddit. Like, they were drawn to it for a reason. It's not like... Like, Reddit is gigantic. Like, mm-hmm. there are so many subreddits of little communities and everyone talking about different things they're interested in. Mm-hmm. But it's like, there is a reason someone was drawn to this subreddit to begin with mm-hmm. that it's like, you know, there's more, to me at least, from mm-hmm. an outsider's perspective right now, just looking into this right now of what I'm seeing, it seems more genuine. And yes. even just in the comment section. And to that, I'm like, again, pulling it back to that community... And And creativity. Creativity, too. And it's just like, that seems... I feel like this is a good way to help certain individuals who don't want to put up with the bullshit of just like, I get how you're feeling. You're sad. But, like, let's just be better. And it's like... Why don't you exercise? Drink more water. Go for a run. Nature. You know what the answer to... I saw a post about the other day where it was like, you know what the answer to depression is? A pair of running shoes. And I was like... Are you fucking serious? Excuse me. (laughs) I was like... (laughs) Excuse the fuck out of me. It's like I can't I can't take two running shoes daily, swallow them in my stuff. Ugh. You know, I was trying to make a pill joke. But yes. You know. But so in my opinion Oh, it's flashing. But in my it's opinion it's okay. That's okay. flashing in the time. In my opinion. Yes. Joke about it. I think yeah, like make a sad situation lighthearted. Find the silver lining and the the lightheartedness. In any dark situation. If you make, if it makes you feel better, if it makes you find a community, if yeah. it makes you feel less alone, mm-hmm. go to two. It's it's the number two, mm-hmm. me IRL, number four, me IRL. I'm doing this with my hands because that means I'm going to put it here on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. <gasps> oh, be cool. Here and it is. Um, the link will be down below. It's right here. Um, as well as links to the. Um, National Suicide I was Hotline. Say, yeah, absolutely. Um, resources that um, when you really are feeling um, bad, I don't like saying it, but if you really, if you really are um, need help, if you need help, it's just important to know that you do have a support system out there. Yeah, just know we love you. We do. And I feel you. Mm-hmm. And life is worth living. It is. It really is. Call us. I should put my phone number. <laughs> put your personal phone number my personal all over phone. the internet. If you need to talk, please call. I I love, love that. I love talking to people. Here's also her social security number, her current all right, living address. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, her date not. But really, Mom's you should name. follow us on Twitter. Our our uh, handles are. Are you trying to wrap up? Okay, cool. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, well, I guess. Is I, that a segue? I am killing it with the segues today. <laughs> But yeah, no, seriously, even if you guys, like, when it's not even, if it's not even related to just, like, here's media I want you guys to talk about, like, if you just want to say hi or something, like, hey, we're chilling on our phones all the time. We literally millennials don't have lives. Media. We have time to make a podcast. That just shows like, how. Like, I'll pause whatever Netflix show I'm currently watching, and I will happily reply to you in the comments or, at, or any tweets you tweeted us. Mm-hmm. No, but yeah, but seriously, um... As Allison said, you can find us. We are at um, at Media Jerkoff on most social media. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. That way you get all of the updates. Facebook is more professional. Just, hey, look, a new episode. Twitter is more Twitter vomit. And here's fun media-related things and weird polls and stuff. We yeah. definitely have a lot more fun over there. Um, you can find us at our personal uh, Twitter handles. I'm at Edward Zorich. Um, she is at Allison Cost. If it says Appleson Candy Corns, you're in the right place. It's her. It's me. Um, yeah. Um, YouTube watchers um, or listeners, if you're happening to be listening on SoundCloud, we're working. We're thinking about the process of putting us on iTunes. We will be actually podcast official someday. We someday. promise it soon. is coming someday soon. Someday, very very soon, I would say. Yeah. Um, but YouTube listeners and watchers, um, if you really like this video, we totally appreciate it. likes. If you want to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Hey, remember when Amelia Fart commented on our video? Amelia and we Fart. still haven't commented back. Because we're so stressed. I'm I loved so it. Stru- I'm like, I loved it and I didn't know what to say. I how? can't think about what to say to her and then I get more anxiety. Like, how do we, how do, how does one just like co- d- respond to a compliment from their idol? Like, she was a topic. Like, like she's like, <laughs> so, so her face. And she's 
saw it. Okay, enough. It's a whole other thing. She's a person. She's a person. She's We're a human. people. She's a human being. And we shouldn't treat her. We shouldn't put her on a, on a pedestal, even though she is hashtag She's iconic. An icon. She's an iconic. <laughs> yes. And I love her so much. Okay, sorry. We're done. All right. But yes, uh, follow us on YouTube or subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that little bell icon if you so you don't miss any notifications. I don't Leave some bells. comments but uh, below. Yep. Um, give us likes. Um, all the stuff that we've talked about when it comes to following us, talking to us, creating activity, it helps others like you guys as viewers and others like us, nerdy, media-loving individuals, find us. Mm -hmm. Um and it's not even just like one of those things like to me like this podcast is not like oh help us get views but it's also just like the, idea, are rent. the idea of having a sense of a community and just being able to talk to you guys and talk about the media we love like I love talking about media to Allison but like let me talk about media to you guys yeah. like, I want to know what you guys are currently watching I want to know what your thoughts are on, on I need Dawn. I need more music yes more music totally someone asked me who my favorite artist was today and I was like I don't know Mm. That's always been a hard question. We'll, like, we'll discuss. Tell me music to listen to. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to create a conversation. And that's the goal, I think, with Media Jerk Off. We want us all to be jerking off to the medias. Woo! Woo! Uh, but seriously, guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you so much. Um, and we'll see you guys next time with another session. Ah! Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye! -bye. Bye. <laughs>